Tonight, former President Donald Trump officially becomes the Republican nominee and announces a running mate just days after surviving an assassination attempt. Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to announce that Senator J.D. Vance has the overwhelming support of this convention to be the next Vice President of the United States. We are forecasting weather impact days all week long with the biggest impact on Wednesday. We're tracking dry lightning. I'll tell you more in your forecast next. Now's the right time to leave office. Plus, the city of Coeur d'Alene will be in search of new leadership after current Mayor Jim Hammond announced that he is stepping down. Tonight, his next steps and the challenges he says await the next mayor. Tonight, we are tracking big headlines surrounding former President Donald Trump's new information now coming to light about the assassination attempt on the former president and the scrutiny the Homeland Security Secretary is now facing. This while Trump made his vice presidential pick on the first day of the Republican National Convention and a legal victory in Florida as the classified documents case has been thrown out. Good evening and thank you for joining us for Kremlin News at 5. I'm Mark Hanrahan. And I'm Whitney Ward. Saturday's shooting left one man in the crowd dead and also injured two others. CBS News has confirmed on the day of the assassination attempt, the shooter purchased a box of ammunition with 50 rounds. He fired from the rooftop of a building about 400 feet away from the stage. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, whose department oversees the Secret Service, fielded questions today about how the gunman was able to get that close before Secret Service counter snipers shot and killed him. An independent review will be conducted to understand the facts regarding protection of the event and make findings and recommendations. President Trump's ear was grazed by a bullet. Two other people were hurt. 57 year old Marine veteran David Dutch and 74 year old James Copenhaver are both now in stable condition. Refired, fi retired Fire Chief Corey Comparatori was fatally shot. The FBI identified the shooter as 20-year-old Thomas Matthew Crooks of Bethel Park, Pennsylvania. Investigators say they found rudimentary bomb-making materials at his home and in his vehicle. Neighbors, though, say they saw nothing out of the ordinary. So far, investigators believe Crooks acted alone and the motive remains unknown. He was a registered Republican but did make a $15 donation to a progressive organization in 2021, according to the Federal Election Commission. This development comes as the former president Donald Trump has picked Ohio Senator J.D. Vance to be his vice presidential nominee, calling him a fighter for the people. That news broke soon after the start of the Republican National Convention. Natalie Brand has more details now from the convention floor in Milwaukee. This convention will come to order. The Republican National Convention kicked off with news that Ohio Senator J.D. Vance will be former President Trump's running mate. What does he bring to the ticket? Uh, he is smart and he can articulate the Make America Great agenda. Uh, as well as anybody. The importance of the position was underscored this weekend when Trump survived an assassination attempt. They tried to assassinate him and he's still coming back fighting. So I think the Republicans are behind him 150 percent now. This afternoon, delegates made Trump's presidential nomination official with the roll call of states. We hereby nominate every single one of them for the greatest president that's ever lived, and that's Donald J. Trump. Hereby declaring him the Republican nominee for president of the United States of America. The former president now in Milwaukee says he rewrote his convention speech in light of the shooting at his Pennsylvania rally. The message that President Trump is coming out of this is very simple. We have to unite America. We have to unite the country. The Trump campaign says the focus of Monday's program will be the economy. Sean O'Brien, the head of the Teamsters Union, who endorsed President Biden in 2020, is tonight's keynote speaker. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Milwaukee. In the meantime, a legal victory for former President Trump. The classified documents case in Florida against him has been thrown out. Trump appointed Judge Eileen Cannon granted the defense's motion over concerns that special counsel Jack Smith was illegally appointed by the attorney general rather than through congressional approval. Smith was prosecuting the former president on 37 counts in this case, including the willful retention of national defense secrets in connection to documents held at his Mar-a-Lago estate. Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas actually brought up this issue of Smith's appointment in oral arguments for Trump's immunity case. Special Counsel Smith signaled that he plans to appeal the dismissal.
all of a sudden he says, you know, I think maybe we should talk about the special counsel and how the special counsel was appointed. Then he mentions it again in a separate opinion. This case had widely been considered the strongest against Trump. The special counsel can appeal with the case potentially even making its way to the U.S. Supreme Court. In the meantime, reaction has been pouring in from our local leaders on the assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump. Senator Patty Murray of Washington issued a statement saying in part, quote, violence begets violence and leaders from all walks of life should forcefully reject violence in all its forms in the strongest possible terms. Political violence, though, is a direct assault to our democracy no matter what the political beliefs of the perpetrator might be. Senator Maria Cantwell responding to now Republican VP pick after a post he made on social media. Vance's post accuses the Biden campaign of calling Trump, quote, an authoritarian fascist and says it was that language that, quote, led directly to the attempted assassination. I don't agree with that. We all need to help lower the temperature. Let's talk about policies and let's talk, you know, sans personalities. On the day of the shooting, Washington's Congresswoman, Eastern Washington Congresswoman Kathy McMorris Rogers posted to X saying, quote, political violence has absolutely no place in the United States of America. My prayers are with President Trump, his family and everyone at the event. Washington State Governor Jay Inslee also weighing in on Saturday, saying in part violence has no place in politics ever. I hope whoever perpetrated today's attack is held to account. Idaho Governor Brad Little posted on X as well a picture of Trump after the shooting saying, quote, praying for President Trump, his family and our nation. Our coverage on the news surrounding the former president continues on our streaming platform, Krem2 Plus. There you'll find the latest headlines so you can stay up to date. Krem2 Plus is free to download on Amazon, Roku and Apple TV. Tonight, the suspect allegedly involved in a deadly weekend crash just faced a judge for the first time this evening. Two teenagers died in that crash. It happened Saturday near Rockford. A man suspected of causing a deadly crash while driving under the influence could be in court as soon as this afternoon. Pictures show a helicopter that landed right there on the road to help airlift those teens to a local hospital. According to the Washington State Patrol, a 33-year-old man had been driving under the influence when he then crossed into oncoming traffic. Troopers say the man then hit a car with three teens inside head on. The suspect just appeared in court. We'll bring you a live report coming up on Creme 2 News at 6. All right, time to talk weather now. Today is turning out to be one of the coolest days of the week as we're actually heating back up. My goodness. Let's bring in our meteorologist Tom <laughs> Sherry now with more on how the hot weather really is going to impact all of us, Tom. Let's talk about it right now. And again, as Mark said, the coolest day of the week. Very odd to be calling 92 degrees the coolest day, but it really will be. And we've popped up since we last spoke during the 4 uh, o'clock broadcast. So 92 now in Spokane, 89 in Coeur d'Alene, 94 in Moses Lake, and it's 95 degrees in Wenatchee. Air quality index right now is at 48, so that puts us in the good air quality range. We like that. We do have an air quality alert, though, out in areas of north central Washington and on the east slopes of the Cascades because of a fire burning in that area. And of course, that's what we're worried about here locally is, and that's why we have uh, weather impact alert days for tomorrow, Wednesday, and Thursday. The extremely hot and dry weather, but also on Wednesday, a chance of seeing some dry light lightning, meaning thunderstorms with not much rain associated with them. Might see a sprinkle, but again, any cloud to ground lightning that may occur on Wednesday is almost sure to start fires, and that would just be awful. I'll have a look at the rest of your seven-day forecast coming up in a few minutes. All right, talk to you then, Tom. Thank you very much. Still to come on Creme 2 News at 5, Coeur d'Alene's mayor says he is stepping down at the end of the summer. Coming up next, Jim Hammond talks with Creme 2 on his next steps and what challenges await the next mayor. Plus, the Republican candidates looking to replace Congresswoman Kathy McMorris Rogers will participate in a forum in just eight minutes, a preview of what to expect tonight. 